Okay, so I'm looking at the basic Revit interface here. There's something I do to it, it's a little bit strange, but I tend to find it helpful. I, I take the properties palette, I'll just put it over on the right hand side. It's just one of these funny things, it's just strictly a preference thing about whether you like it under here or like it over there. I just tend to like it over on the right hand side, just because then I can see a lot of the properties kind of without doing a whole lot of scrolling and kind of keep just the project views over on this side. Now, when we're actually working with walls and we go through under the Home tab and we choose either the Wall tool or the Floor tool or any of the main elements, mm -hmm. you see that over here in the Properties palette up at the top there's this Type selector and the type will show you the different types of walls that are available. And most people will start just by drawing generic walls, things that just have a material, some generic material but not really a whole lot of layering to it. And the key is to go ahead and set one of these up so that it actually looks more like your wall assembly. So, for example, if you say, oh, brick on CMU, okay, which is what several of you are using, okay, and we go ahead and choose that, we can actually start taking a look at that wall and really starting to understand how it's put together. So if we edit the type of the wall, okay, which is the actual properties of all the different layers of the wall, it's about one foot seven and a half inches thick right now, but it's made up of all these different layers, and this is something that you can kind of adjust. So, in this case, it looks like it's about 5 eighths inch of sheetrock with some metal furring behind it. Then that's on top of the masonry, the CMU wall, okay, 8 inches thick or 7 5 eighths in actual dimensions. They're showing a uh, moisture barrier, 3 inches of some sort of insulation. That must be some sort of like rigid foam insulation or something like that. Then an air barrier. And then finally the brick on the outside. Okay, and that may map your wall, or that may not be like your wall. Yeah, and if you need to go through and change that, you can. For example, if we wanted to create a wall that wasn't one, that didn't have the sheetrock on the inside, we'd go ahead and take that out very easily. How we generally do stuff like that is just whenever you have like a type, like a wall type, and you want to change it, you can edit it. And if it's not quite what you have in mind, I tend to duplicate things. So I'll say, great, I'll say brick on CMU with no JIP board. Oops. Hang on. Let's see what's going on here. That's very strange looking. Let's see what's happening here. Let's come back over to da, 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 da. close all that stuff. Did I close my view? I actually did. Well, can I ask a question? yes, you can. Anytime. If you, you can duplicate the wall, then it's going to just save it as you modify it. What'll happen? Yes, if you don't duplicate the wall, what's going to happen is let me uh, da, 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 da. cancel that. It'll just uh, it'll replace all the existing walls. So one of the yeah that already have used that type. So here's one of the like little finesse points about like working with Revit. If you go through and duplicate things, you won't affect anything that's already been placed because you're going to create a new type. If you change, you always have to think: Have I used that someplace else? And am I going to like uh, you know, change something unintentionally because you know something else is actually using something that does have the JIP board in? So just watch out, and that's going to be true of doors and windows and anything where we go through and do some duplicating. Okay, let me see if I can do that again without sort of messing up uh, whatever I did. Let's see what's happening here. So again, I'm going to go down to this wall type. I'll go to the exterior brick on CMU. I'll edit its type and say duplicate it. And let's see if my keyboard's working. Okay. Now, I keep on doing something very strange to my keyboard here, and I'm going to figure out what that is in just a second. The same way like moving. Whatever you do for moving. The same way as the Yeah, model. If you took model exactly, you have to. Okay, I think I finally got that turned off. Okay, so in any case, as you guys finish logging in, I'm just creating this new type. Okay, again, I've created a new type because if I create a new type, then it won't change the existing one. 
Okay, so once you're at this type properties, what we do is say duplicate and give it a new name. So just something that's different. I just said exterior brick on CMU, no JIP board, just some sort of something that's going to give you a good clue about what it is. Then we can go through and say edit, edit the structure. So go ahead and give the name. And then in the top, towards the top of the dialog, there's a structure and there's a big button that says edit. Go ahead and click on that guy. And if you click on edit the structure, you get the layers, so all the different wall layers in there. So you can sort of see masonry brick, the air layer, all those different things. And you can adjust the thicknesses of any of those things. You can take out anything that you want to take out. You can add in layers if you want to. And this is one of the first things that sort of confuses people about Revit, but gives you the ability to start customizing, is that you can start changing all these things. So for example, if I want to get rid of the JIP board, I can just choose that layer, say delete it. Maybe I'll choose that furring layer and I'll delete it too. If there's something else you want to add on the inside, if you want to put plaster in there or you want to put wood paneling or whatever it is that you want to put in there, you can go ahead and put that in there too. You can go ahead and just add any layers you want to. For example, if I wanted to go through an insert and let me push it down, I could put some other sort of finish layer in there and choose some sort of material and give it a thickness. So. Yes, you could put a double layer of sheetrock in there. We could increase the thickness of the air insulation or increase the air thickness, whatever it is you want in there. So I'll put some sort of wood veneer on the inside and give it a thickness oh, of like a quarter of an inch or something like that. Hey, I just if you position there. Yeah. Finish one, how did you get that one Okay, so. Which one? Oh, with um, layers? Yeah, with the material. It's right next to it. It's the thing that says material. Okay, there's finish one, and there's material. And if you choose that, it's that little dot, dot, dot. That'll let you choose the materials. It'll pop up the whole big material dialog. Okay. Okay. We can even create new materials if there's not something we want in there. Okay. But the first thing is really, just go ahead and like start customizing the wall to really make sure it has all the right layers. Because the whole issue of the layering in the walls is when you go through and, you know, when you cut your section, it's going to be very important that the layers are in there, and the closer they are, the less work you're going to have to do later on. Later on. How do you show ties, for example? Ties are a little bit hard in terms of doing that, like so between, you know. and insert it? Or um, it's, it's, the big question is going to be whether we want to do, like, them in 3D everywhere or just in 2D, like in the section. In, in 3D? 3D works, we'd have to create like a family. Yeah, a tie okay. family and go ahead and insert it in the places where you do want to see it. You can't insert it within the perspective. No, I wish you could. You know, some things that you can do, it's kind of like just give you variations on this theme. And again, don't worry if this is kind of getting a little weird in terms of like how far you want to go with it. The break has a ton. There's the outside layer yeah. and the CMU layer. They are two independent right now as a drop. Or yeah. this defined. So they would move independently. And they will do move independently, but they, we, we, it's okay to move them vertically independently. Then it's not okay to move them out and in independently. Exactly. They don't to fall, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Because ultimately, your hurricane suction wedge would be acting only on the, the near brick. Uh, and the backing that is behind would be independent. So there's a tie that moves, uh, that's like this kind of movement. The slides are, are, are like this, right? Usually slides. And, but the prevents from going in and out. Okay. And just, yeah. Yeah, and just, just well, notice, you're under a really good point in terms of this again. You really, the way to think about this in terms of the modeling, what the modeling is really good at, with this sort of construction, with this part of the modeling, this is very good when you have sort of continuous layers. You know, where things are like more like ties that are spaced out at a set horizontal or vertical distance. It's not so good for doing that. We have to kind of come up with another strategy for kind of putting those in. In terms of space in those. You can't find out. Yeah. And, how, and, and is there a way, good way to show in a 3D the latest, like tie breaker if you have and so on? Oh, yeah. And okay. that, that, will, that will go and show you. Okay. Okay. okay we'll get to that. Okay. Yes. Uh, I'm trying to get over behind. How, oh, nurse. How do you get there? Okay. I'll go to you. Oh, yeah. No worries. No worries. Now we're just sort of playing around with our walls. So, Andre, if you'll help, if you'll help me out with that one, no. let's go ahead and like think about like how we start putting these things together. Okay, but the idea is you'll have different wall types and different people will have things. A lot of people have concrete and masonry. It's like you have masonry. What was your wall again? Your, uh, your symbol. Uh, um, your veneer. Oh, that's right. Okay, very good. And he's going to have more like stucco on that side. No worries. Yes. 
Okay. Let's say, okay, what it's basically saying is that every layer has to at least have some thickness. So let's go ahead and close it. And for that wood veneer, we need to put in something like, oh, put in like half an inch or something like that. And a quick way to do that is you could just say 0.5. Yeah. Okay. That's all it is. It just need, it needs some thickness. The only thing that can give a zero is like a, what they consider a membrane. Okay. Thank you. No worries. Okay, so when you go, go ahead and put walls in, things like, oh, uh, let's think about just basic wall modeling and stuff like that. So we put some walls together. Um, if we go through and start placing a wall, for example, I'm going to go ahead and just place the wall on level one, but I'll make it sort of a little bit tall. Okay, what you can do is, you know, choose your basic wall type. You get to sort of say really, uh, you know, what the height of the wall is, whether the wall is going to be 20 feet unconnected or up to a specific floor level. Okay. Ultimately, you're probably going to start doing things to specific floor levels. That's really a stronger way to do it. For now, I'm just going to leave it unconnected, okay? Because I haven't really defined a lot of levels. I get to choose sort of uh, as I draw. Is the line where I'm drawing the center line of the wall, or is it the interior or the exterior face, or the interior or the exterior face of what's considered the core? And the core for a lot of your walls, for the CMU walls, that's the core, okay? Uh, for the stud layer walls, that's more the core there. But I'll start drawing some basic walls down. Now, as I'm drawing the walls, you'll see they're kind of showing up relatively plain over there. They're just kind of showing up like the two outside surfaces. And if we'd like to actually start seeing the layers of the wall in a little more detail, what we can do is actually just turn up what's considered the level of detail of this view. And way down there at the bottom, there's all these kind of quick access controls, little view controls down here. And just the notion of coarse, medium, and fine. Go ahead and turn it up to your medium or fine, and then you should be able to see the layering in the walls. Okay, which will give you a little more detail. Then you can kind of zoom on in. I'm even going to go through and say shade the walls. That gives me a little color information, too. But there's this whole thing about what level of detail you want to see things. And just really as a matter of efficiency, what Revit's doing is, at a coarse level of detail, it's not drawing everything in incredible detail, just to kind of make it a little bit quicker, to kind of put it out there. Okay, but at the finer level, it'll show you all that stuff. Now, what we're going to do is, we have a basic wall kind of in place. We're also going to go ahead and put a floor in here that intersects with the wall, and just kind of start thinking about how those intersections work, because that's, that's really the core of the way a lot of this detailing works. That's probably the most common kind of detail you look at mm -hmm. is wall to floor. Yes, that's so. actually, and can you put something like a steel deck? Yep. Because we have issues with the steel deck. With the ridges, so, yeah. 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 No, we'll do that. Okay. Okay, no worries. Okay, so for the floor, let me go ahead and choose the floor tool. The floor is also in the home ribbon, or in the home tab of the ribbon. So under home, we'll go ahead and choose, looks like I'm already <laughs> in there. Let me kind of escape out of there just so you can see it again. Under the home tab, I'm still in there. Hang on. What happens for me is my uh, my ribbon gets to be a little bit uh, short, so you can't like uh, sort of see everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. But when I have the floor tool in there, we again have the choice of really a type of floor. And what Andre was suggesting is let's go for this lightweight concrete on a metal deck. That in particular is sort of a, it's an interesting one to work with because it has the whole issue of the ridged floor yeah. decking, which is a little bit harder to model. Let's get, it has some special things to it. If you were just doing like wood floors, like wood floors, like 10 inch wood joists with a wood finish or wood trusses, we could choice one of those. Well, can we show a wood joist deck? Yeah, oh sure, let's do both. Okay, let's go ahead and let me do the wood joist with a 10 inch finish. Okay. Wood finish. We'll start with that one. Uh, how, how did you get there? Okay, okay. Uh, I just. Yeah. No worries. Uh, okay. So let me get there again. We're going to go home. I'm in the floor tool. I'm going to go ahead and choose the type of floor. Now here's kind of a trick about drawing floors. As you look at all the tools that are available over here, there's a number of them. We can draw by lines. We can sort of draw rectangles. We can draw these geometric shapes. A really good tool to work on is right here. This is one that actually lets you pick walls. And the nice thing about picking walls is it'll go through and take the boundary of the floor and put it up to a significant point on the wall. That way if the wall moves, the floor will move with it. 
So that's going to do a little parametric locking between those. And when we choose that tool, as opposed to just drawing the line at a specific location, we have this choice of whether or not to extend the wall or extend the floor into the wall core. Now, that's something generally you'd like to do. Let's talk about what the impact is. If you choose a wall and you choose the floor to go all the way to the outside surface of the wall or the inside surface of the wall, okay, you know, there are some structural details where that works that way, where you actually have the full floor all the way out. But the most common condition we typically see is typically that you bring the floor joist right up to the edges of the studs, to the face of the studs or to the, top, the edge of the interior, like concrete blocks, whatever it is. Okay, so extending the wall into the core just says let's match the core boundary, that structural layer, as opposed to the outer surface, so the wall floor is not bleeding through. Okay. But if you bleed through, how do you? Because if you have a platform, yeah. Like when, you know, you put the wall. In, yeah. Because right now you're saying balloon. Yeah. Then you have the start, and the start comes in. Yeah. But if you have a platform that yeah. you start, floor, and start. Sure. Then. How do you close from the outside? Ah, well, this is the whole issue. Let's show you that, because yeah, it's really it's, it's a good sort of like a point in terms of really how to go through and do that. Let me do this. I'm going to choose this. I'm going to say extend it to the core. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the wall, and let's kind of see where it actually picked. It picked this line right here, which is really sort of right in the middle. That's the edge of the concrete block layer, okay? but it's not the uh, foam layer or the air layer. The brick's on to the left of where that pink line is. It's just the concrete blocks on the inside. Okay, let me go ahead and just close that up and we'll take a look at what this is doing. Actually, I'll choose this one too, just so we sort of have it on those two sides. To finish the floor, let me just, uh, I'll just close it with just some lines. Okay, every floor basically has to have a closed continuous boundary. So if you're starting to create a floor and it's complaining at you, it won't finish the floor. It usually means that your pink lines just aren't closing up and intersecting. So go ahead and get the one wall, get the upper wall, and then we'll just close the other. So you got that one. That's beautiful. Let's go ahead and get this one up here. Just click on that. Beautiful. And now for the last two, let's just kind of close it out. Beautiful. And close it out there. Now, up here in your corner, they're not quite joining together. So go ahead and zoom on in there. What you can do when things don't join together is this fantastic tool called the trim tool. And the trim tool will let you kind of click on two different lines, and then click on that line, and it'll bring them together. And you kind of form a clean intersection for you. So the trim tool is your friend when you're doing these boundaries because it's the cleanest way. Got it? Okay. No worries. Okay. Now, when you get done drawing your floor, go ahead and say OK, or actually it's click the big green check mark to finish the floor. Okay, and let's see what happens. Oh, it's interesting in terms of what's going on there. I expected it to actually give me a question, but it didn't, alas. Okay, let's go back and like take a look at how well it actually did. Well, actually, no, let me do this. Let me see if I can get it to do the, the right thing, which is what, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, yeah, don't worry about you doing this. Let me just, I just wanna see if I can force it to give me a question, which is a good question to have it ask by drawing the rest of the floor or the rest of the boundary in here. Okay, and then when I put in the floor, oh, I know what the problem is. It's because <laughs> the reason it's not asking me the question is I have the floor at the wrong level. I'm putting the floor at level one. What I really want to do is put the floor at level two, so it would be halfway up the wall as opposed to right down in the middle. Okay, so let me go ahead and fix that. I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Okay, so again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the floor uh, tool, and I'm going to say, as opposed to putting it at level one, I'm going to put it up at level two. That way it's going to intersect with the wall, as opposed to just being underneath the bottom of the wall. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now I'll come in here, just like I did before, and finish it. Now, here's what I wanted to the question. I was hoping to see this question, because this is sort of the good one. Okay. It's basically saying, hey, your floor or roof and wall are overlapping with each other. There's some sort of intersection between the two. Would you like to cut out the overlapping volume? Okay. And the answer to this question is generally yes, please do, because what's happening is your floor joists and your studs are all coming together. We don't want to double count that volume. We actually just want to have one dominate the other. So when you go through and say yes, what happens is, didn't look very dramatic there, but let's cut a section and we'll see what it actually did. If I go to the View tab, are you familiar with cutting sections? You good on that? Yeah. Okay, so, well, go to the View tab. 
and grab that section tool. And let's just go ahead and draw, and you can draw either left to right or up and down, whichever way you want to cut your section. Kind of pull across. Okay, you can see where the section cut line is and that blue boundary up to the top, that's how deep we're going to be looking. You can sort of see where the section is going to be looking. The section has now appeared, it's here in the project browser, but if you want to just sort of double click on the arrow, we can double click right there and take a look at it there. Either way, let's see if we can open that section. And in that section, okay, your floor is still down low, that's what's going on there. Okay, mine's up on level two. Why don't you do this? Why don't you grab your floor? And you can either do that or just actually change this properties right over there. Yeah, you just undo that and back to you Or even better yet, why don't you go to level two and we'll draw another floor up there? Oh, if you choose it there, it's right. Uh, just leave it there before. Okay, very good. Okay, now what happens is in the course level of detail, you don't really see much of the detail you want to see. However, if you go up to a finer level of detail, you actually will see the level of detail. And let's go ahead and talk about the difference between what's going on on my screen and your screen. Okay, on my screen, you'll notice that I actually have the floor kind of cutting out and intersecting. So what's happening is the floor is coming out to the outer structural layer, the concrete block is coming up, so the wood joists are in here. Then we have the uh, brick veneer, the, wood, uh, the air and the insulation kind of all on the outside. And it's really creating something which is pretty close to the accurate detail. Okay, so you like to have that happen, to have them be as close as possible to what you want. Now, yeah, I mean, uh, some of yours, if we created the floor and we moved it up, okay, it doesn't do the intersection because it didn't ask you the question again, right? Okay, do this. If you want to get it to ask the question, okay, go ahead and choose the floor. Okay, you can choose it in any view. Okay, and now go through and say that you want to edit its boundaries. Edit its boundaries up there, okay. And it's going to say, hey, I can't edit it in the floor plan. You go ahead and say you're going to edit it in level two. Okay. Yeah. Now, go ahead and just move one of those pink lines ever so slightly. Go ahead and use the ones that aren't really intersecting. One of those. Just move it a little bit. Just need to make some change to the boundary. And then when you click the green, finish check mark, you should ask you the question again. So say yes this time. Okay, now go back to your section view. And it will do the intersection the way you want. Yes? Oh, yeah, you're, you're looking fine there. But the last thing is to go ahead and get it to do the intersection. So, to do the intersection, what we'll do is we'll edit the boundary. Okay, let's go to level two. And all you need to do is go through and just change it ever so slightly. I just want it to move, you can move an inch or whatever it is. You can put it back if you want. Now, say finish it. And this time it'll, it'll realize, hey, there's an intersection section asking you whether to cut it out. Say yes. Now let's go back to your section view, and you'll see it's actually looking pretty good. Now, here it is. Now, wood joists actually do pretty good in terms of the way they're looking here. Wood joists, well, they're not really omnidirectional, but when we render them in 3D, you know, often they don't look very different. Well, we'll talk about that. There's this whole idea of 3D rendering versus not 3D rendering. We'll sort of like that. Figure out how to clean things up there. The wood floors, that's actually a generic floor. This is my point is bad. I sort of created sort of an ugly, just a plain old generic floor. Let me change that back to my wood uh, joist with a wood finish. Okay, that's a little bit better. You can sort of see it did a little bit better. I got the wood joist and I have the finished floor coming in. Although it's not quite accurate because the finished floor wouldn't be coming all the way in. Okay, it would probably be stopping right there. We'll talk about how to fix that up in just a second. Okay. Yes? What's that one? Level one? That's a good question. I think that is actually just, oh, that's the level one. Oh, okay. That's just the level line cutting through. Now, steel deck floors are really kind of a special beast. So let's talk about them. And that's because when you have a deck that has a lightweight concrete uh, deck on, or you know, on top of like steel, like kind of waffle decking, um, it looks different in that there's these little ridges that need to show up in your details, and when you're doing sort of like steel frame construction, you want to show those too. 
So here's how they look. If you go ahead and choose to take your floor, and let's just change its type to be, say, three inch lightweight concrete on two inch metal deck. Try that. Uh, I'm going to go back. Yeah. Say again? Oh, go back to, to get to the section B, you can either do it in the browser or you can click on the one on the arrow. Either way. Yeah, yeah. Actually, click right on the header. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Now, my lines are sort of very big and heavy just because my section is sort of drawn at such a small scale. If I go ahead and sort of bring it up to a quarter scale or something like that, the line weights will look a little bit better in terms of what's going on. But the key thing to know about sort of these steel decks is steel decks have a direction to them. Okay, so what's happening is my steel deck currently is set so that the ribs are going sort of back into the screen. Okay, if we want to go through and change that direction, or let's try this. How about go to the floor plan level and draw a section in the other direction? So draw a section just right or uh, top to bottom as opposed to left to right. And you'll see if you double click on that one, those same ribs are there, but they look a little bit different because in this case, they're actually running across the screen as opposed to into the screen. Oh, yeah, just go to the lead and we'll put it back in. Now, the issue of floors and really what direction the span, which direction the ribs run in, is really actually something you control back in the sketch. We don't pay much attention to it. But what you do back in the sketch is, if I choose that floor, and again I edit its boundary, I'll go back to the sketch. We don't pay a whole lot of attention, but see those two parallel lines that are kind of hanging around over here? These are indicating what direction the span is of those ribbed elements. So if we want to go through and change that, what we need to do is just kind of shift around which is the line that actually uh, determines you know, the uh, direction of the span. And in terms of where that shows up in the toolbar, Oh, right next to all those little drawing tools, there's a couple of different modes over here, whether you're drawing the boundary, whether you're drawing a slope arrow, or where you're actually drawing the uh, span direction. If you choose the third one down, the span direction, Then you can go ahead and shift it and choose the other direction to have them span in the other direction. Sure. No worries. That's actually just uh, up here in the ribbon. There's this notion of there's the boundary line, the slope arrow, and span direction. So if you choose span direction, you can just sort of choose which of those different boundaries will be the one that determines the span direction. It's usually the first line you draw, but you can change it later. So there's your span direction. And if you want to change it, you can choose right here and then choose, say, that one. And then what will happen is the, the ribs will run in the other direction, or the joists will run in the other direction. That's the other way to think about it. So edit the boundary. There you go. And then here's your span direction. Oh, I'll, I'll the oh, no worries. What you do is you choose the, uh, choose the floor, okay, and it'll say edit its boundary. Okay. Right up in there. Okay, and then we'll go back to the floor plan level. So we'll get that's good. And now we'll see its boundary. Okay. And now we can go ahead and choose its span direction. Now, let me do this with you just because I want to sort of be respectful of your time. I'm actually quite good to kind of keep on going and pass along, but how are you guys on your time? Because I, I want to, if, if I can, if you have a, like 15 or 20 minutes more, I can keep on pushing. Do you have time? Like if we go a little longer? Yeah, so like, like almost 11.30, right? 11.30? Yeah, we have class 11. Oh, fantastic. Are you good to stay till 11.30 or close to that, 11.20? Okay, that gives a little more time to get further. That would be good. Okay, sounds good. Okay, just want to ask your permission. So, okay, so great. We got this basic floor thing going on. We have this issue of sort of things, oh, almost looking like they're intersecting pretty well. They're getting pretty close. Okay, but let's think about sort of what's going on here relative to really what you want to have happen relative to uh, like a real detail. And we'll come back and look at specifically the issue of 3D and what happens with this uh, metal deck in just a second, because that's kind of a very special case about how we have to handle it. Okay. These big section views, we like our sections to be as accurate as possible. So these big section views, the key here is really just editing uh, or modeling as accurately as possible. 
And the big thing typically is really just making sure that the boundaries of the floors and the boundaries of the wall floor layers, getting them all sort of set up so you have the approximate, you know, the right intersections in terms of what's going on. Uh, I don't know how to um, Okay, so you're looking at the plan view again. So you're in a plan view. Go ahead and switch back to the uh, section view. There you are. Yeah, you're looking good. Okay. Your span is going in the other direction, but that's okay. Here's what's going on. Okay. Let's go ahead and add just a couple more elements to this, and then we'll start making this more like a, a, a detail view, something like that, kind of do a call. Yes, exactly. So one thing we want to do is, you know, we haven't really sort of done anything with the structure so far, but if we wanted to under this metal decking, put like a steel beam in there, or put a wooden beam, if you have sort of the wooden beams supporting the joists, let's talk about that. Okay. The beam tools, actually show up they're also under the home tab but let me give you sort of a kind of funny thing you have to think about in terms of beams when you're drawing beams the hard thing to keep in mind is that they're often above your head so as you draw them yeah you know, when we're drawing in a floor plan view we're typically looking down at the floor okay if you want to put things above your head oh and even when you're looking down at the floor you're cutting at four feet above the floor looking down so when you place beams oftentimes we get this funny message that says, oh, the elements that you just placed can't be seen in the view. Okay, and that's okay, it's just above your head. But if you want to sort of prevent that, the thing you do is when you're placing beams, don't place them in floor plan views. If you place them in ceiling plan views and look up instead, okay, you'll do a lot better in terms of actually putting them where they need to be. So let's kind of show you what I mean by that. If you go to, for example, the ceiling plan view, and let's go to the ceiling plan of level one, okay, it's going to look pretty boring right now, but what we're doing is we're now at level one, cutting at four feet, looking up at the ceiling. So what we're seeing is the bottom of floor two right now. Okay. So when it's time to go through and place a beam, you can go through. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> like, uh -oh. The machine's uh, cycled off on you. Okay. The beams show up under, uh, it's the structure tab. So if you go to uh, the plan the view and go to structure, see if we can get yourself there. Go over to structure. Beautiful. So over in here, you got your walls stretched out. You're looking at your ceiling plan. You're looking good. It's structure for me. You're going to be good. Okay, structure there. Excellent. You're going to catch up in a second. Beautiful. Okay, we have walls. We have beams. We have structural columns, structural floors, trusses, and brace. Turns out the floor is not all there, but we already have a floor selected. If we want to make it a structural floor, that is, if we consider it as part of an analysis program, all we really have to do is check that box. Okay, what do you mean with that? What's that? Right there. The structure is tower. Oh. Yeah. Oh, the property is not. Oh, the left. You have the left tower. He's just over here for you. Oh, right here. Okay. Yeah, no worries. I just I like to put him over there. This is kind of, you know, I don't know how I'm doing it that way. Okay, so we got, we're going to go with that beam tool. Let's talk about the beam tool. The beam tool, like most things, there's sort of issues about where we're going to place things, and there's the whole issue of what type of thing we're going to place. Now, for placement, okay, there's this whole issue of, okay, let's start with up in the options bar, where are we going to put it? If I'm looking up at level two, I don't want to put it at level one, I actually want to put it at level two. So what I'm going to do is change that. So the placement plan is going to be relative to level two, not level one. What's that? Oh, no worries. Uh, okay, we're going to place the beam, and the question is, right now it says we're going to place it at level one, so we could be down here. Oh, okay. Okay, I want to put it up at level two. Okay, so go ahead, and up in the options bar, say you want level two as opposed to level one. Beautiful. Okay. Next, we're going to go through and choose what kind of beam we want, and if you pull down under the type selected, you'll see there's a couple different oh, wide flange sections in there. Looks like I only have one wide flange section in there by default. If you would like to load some more, or you'd like to load some wood framing members, if that's your system instead, let's show you how you do that. Okay, if you need to load some new structure elements, come back over here, you'll see a load family button. See that? Uh -huh. Click it. And what you want to do is go navigating through the library, see if you can get to this uh, structural section. And under structural, You'll find framing. 
Framing being the horizontal elements as opposed to the columns. And you can find a wood element or a steel element. Find whatever you like. If you want to load up some wooden beams, I'll go to wood and I'll say either dimensional lumber for smaller or laminated veneer lumber for some bigger things or oh like glue lamb beams if I want to get some very big chunky ones. So you can choose something like that. When you choose one of these beam types, you'll actually get this groovy little catalog of all the different sizes. So it goes ahead and says, hey, I know about wooden beams and the sizes they need to be, what they're going to be, the base versus the depth they're going to be. So you can choose from this catalog the sizes that you want to load in there. So for example, if I want to get a bunch of two bys, and I also want to get a bunch of four bys, yeah, and you literally load in as many as you need. There's no harm to loading in more. The more you put in, it sort of fills up a little bit more memory. But, you know, for the size of our projects, as opposed to some large commercial project, it's really not bad. I would probably just sort of load up as many as you need to. If you need to sort of select a bunch that are discontinuous, control click will get sort of uh, let you select things at different parts in the list. But go ahead and choose them. It's going to warn us. Oh, all those sizes might take up memory. I'm going to say, sure, go for it. Okay, so now those are all going to show up in the list. Let, let me go ahead. I'm going to grab a couple more steel sizes too, because if you have steel sizes and you want to put those in there, it's going to work just the same way. I'll say structural, framing, steel, and oh, if I want to get the wide flange sections, I could put them in there. There's also some, oh, bar joists, like, uh, you know, oh, like open web joists, yeah. things like that, if you want to put those in there instead. In fact, let me put some of those in. I'm not even sure what a double pitch one is. <laughs> I'm going to go back to the other ones. <laughs> Let's go back to framing, and again, no harm in loading stuff in. I'll just go for a case series. It, it will bring Windows updates, and, and basically when you don't load in terminus updates. It does. It That's very annoying. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and load in some 14-inch and some 18-inch bar, uh, bar joists. Now, all I'm really doing is making things available. I'm loading in my project. And the key is you want to sort of load in pieces that you need to sort of match your construction. OK, it's doing a little regenerating right now. How are you guys doing in terms of loading stuff in? Oh, you're doing the, I see. It's, it's fighting with you. It's fighting with you. Follow along here for a moment. OK, so once you have the, the beam sizes in there, we can go through and choose what we want to place. If I want to put a piece of dimensional lumber, I can choose one of those. Let me go ahead. I'm going to put one of those I-beams, the W selection. Okay. I'm going to again put it at level two. I'm going to just going to draw it across from here to here. And we'll talk about that in just a second. Notice it says, hey, none of the elements are visible in the reflected ceiling plan. And we'll talk about why that is. There's this whole funny thing about beams and making them visible. Okay, beams have this funny category or quality to them. Okay, they're a piece of structural framing, and in Revit architecture, it tends not to show structural framing. Okay, so to combat that, what we have to do is as follows. In the view, okay, there's this thing called visibility graphics, and we need to sort of control whether we want to have the structural framing showing or not. I'll say I want to turn that on. Okay, and then it'll show up, but show up as a single line. Let's do that again slowly for people who miss that. Okay, what you do is um, go back to the View tab, and you're going to find way up here towards the top, there's something called Visibility Graphics, right? It's always type VG. That's kind of a shortcut for getting there. But if you go there, you can uh, scroll on down the list, and you got to make sure structural framing is turned on, because for a lot of the architectural views, it isn't. It's just sort of turned off. Okay. Another thing you might be sort of looking at here that may cause some concern, notice that beam shows up just as a single line right now. Okay, and the reason that is happening is actually when we have a coarse level of detail, it always shows structural framing just as single lines to kind of make it a little bit small. Or, yeah. All right, let's go back and sort of see what's going on. So did you turn on visibility graphics? Yeah. Oh my god, actually, we do think it's there. You can vary, oh, you know what? That, 
Do this for a minute for me. Go to here, uh, right next to it. Turn on the wire. Right? Okay. I think what's going on is your two by eight is so small it's buried alive inside the floor. We're going to fix that in just a second. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. What's happening is you, if you're uh, if you have a hidden line view and your structural framing element's relatively small, it may be buried alive inside the sandwich of the floor. Okay. Yeah. So. We got those things turned on. If I want to sort of show that in a little more detail, I can say turn it up to either medium, and then you can actually sort of see the width of it. Now, these framing elements, these things you can copy or array or whatever it is. If I need to put one of these every two feet or every three feet or whatever it is, I can go through. In fact, let me kind of show you a good way to do that. Because, you know, are you guys, in terms of working with Revit, like, yeah, how about this? One way is to copy. I could go ahead and choose that and just copy an instance over like that. Try that. See if you can sort of get a second one. Okay. What you do is go ahead and choose one of them. Then there's a copy tool. It's right here. Okay. And if you copy, then you can like choose one and kind of pull it all over. Okay. And drop it. You know. Now, another way to do that. How do you get yeah, copy? Would be good. I think if we got the copy, I think we're just going to get a level weight. Is that, is that a second? Oh, is that the second one? Oh, okay, it's a great one. Actually, yeah, there we go. And copy. Now choose it once. Now pull a copy over. Got it. Now, a very common thing with framing is very often when you put it in there, we put it in a really regular spacing. You want one every four feet or every two feet or something like that. So you could go copy, 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 copy. Or you could do something called arraying, which will make your life a little bit easier. And all the arraying is, it says, make many copies and put them in a regular spacing. Actually, before we do our copying, let's go back and make sure that first one's actually in the right place and the right height, because we just assume before we copy it around, make sure it's actually at a good place. So let's do this. I'm going to go back to my section view, and you will see that I am not quite right about where I want my structure to be. My problem is, I've got my beams, they're kind of hanging around here right at the top, level two, which is the top of the concrete. And what I need to do is actually drop them down a little bit so they're instead riding below the metal deck. Okay, so yeah, in wooden floors, you know, often the beams, since they're part of the sandwich, are right up to that level. They're really right up to the bottom of the finished floor, usually, kind of within there. But you'll almost always have to do a little bit of adjusting of the height. And how you do that is if you go through and choose a beam, okay, there's this thing over here that talks about how it's really adjusted relative to that floor plane. Right now it's set to always sort of put the Z level, put it right at the top. Okay, put the top of the beam right at that location. And what I'm going to do is go through and put in something called other, which will let me give it a little bit of an offset. And I can drop those down. If you're working with the, uh, the uh, metal deck, it's uh, five inches down. And we'll, we'll keep attached right to the slab. If we move the slab. Yeah, well, it'll be at, it's, it's relative to level two. Yes, yeah, yeah, so if level two moves, it'll move relative to level two. Same thing I'm going to do this one. So let me say other here. I'm going to drop that one down to minus 0 0.5. Okay, let's take a look. So we got yours. Choose that. Go ahead and change it so it's good at top. It says other. Then we can put it in distance. You know, and now you can put it in there and drop it down five inches. And then uh, put it in there. There we go. Okay, so. Wait, wait. Oh, it went up the other way. That's okay. We're just going to put a negative in front of the whole thing. Yeah. Oops. It's fine, yeah. There you go. Okay. Okay, so a good thing to do. Oh, you're looking good there. Now, you have wood going against the seal, so that's not quite right about how we construct it. And the direction. And the direction. Yes. <laughs> we have a couple things. But we're going to get the general principle in terms of what's going on. We can change the span in the other direction. Okay. Okay, you're looking good. Oh, good. So you have like an open web dress or something like that. Uh, I think they're one. Yeah. I don't know IV, but you can see it actually looks pretty good. 
Okay, so once you have these sort of structural framing elements and they're looking pretty good, let's go ahead and, oh, I'll just show you the array, but then I want to show you how to get, make a detail out of this so that we can like start, uh, like yeah, get, you, get you off to your next class but give you a little bit more information. Okay, so here's the deal. If I'm looking at the level two, or level one ceiling plan, a couple things I could do. One is, let me just show you a quickie trick for how you can kind of array these things. Copying would be sort of copying them around one at a time. Arraying is a tool that's really right over here. Arraying just says, make a series of copies, but put them at a regular distance. So I can choose the array tool. And again, don't worry about sort of following along step by step, because we only have about 15 minutes. I want to kind of give you a couple things that we'll just sort of seed your thinking with that we can practice with a little bit later. So when you choose the array tool, the idea is you're going to go ahead and say that you want to put in a set number of them, like I'm going to put in like 10 of them, with some number, and then I can choose a distance that I want to offset. So if I want to put 10 at 3 feet, all arraying does is it does a very good job of making multiple copies. Okay, again, let me show you that. So how arraying works is I choose one, but instead of copy, I go to the array tool. And the big difference is you put in a number of how many you want to create. I'll put 12 of them in here. You still go ahead and give it an offset. I want to offset it, oh, three feet, whatever it is. Okay, but it makes a series of copies. Okay, so that's really good for doing like a kind of like large framing. Okay, array is, is if you choose something, there's copy, which is, look, uh, right here. Array is right up there. It looks like kind of like a four square. No worries. Now, yes, we can do a radial array too to kind of spin it all around. Okay, now this is getting pretty close, but let's go that one step further and say, okay, you're getting close. How do we actually make this into, we have sort of pretty accurate geometry now. Let's make this into really more of a detail. Okay, and that's where we sort of want to like get you to today. Here's the deal. These big building sections are good. At this level of detail, it's typically how to do big building sections. I have my floor in my room. It's showing the overall kind of structural system, but it's really leaving out some detail right there. We want to create sort of something that's much smaller and much more isolated just to that spot so we can really kind of look at what's happening there. How we do that typically is we go ahead and kind of do our big model first. We create an overall building section. Okay. And then when we really want to focus in and really look just specifically at this connection, we go through and do something called a call-out. We really zoom in on that, and we're going to bring it up at a much higher level of detail and add some more to it. So I can say call-out, and I'll just sort of zoom in on this area of the diagram. Okay, it's going to go through and create something called call out of section one, and I can zoom over there. And I might want to go ahead and bop the, bump this up to a higher level of detail of three quarters of an inch or one inch equals a foot, whatever is going to be appropriate for how you want to draft those. How do you get to go Okay, what you do is go back in the section view, okay, it, then go to the view tab. There you go, and call outs right there. And Callout's going to give you just sort of this ability to uh, like zoom in on a specific area. Go, go back to the view. There you go. Eating. And now it shows up as callout of section one. Okay. And it's going to be. Now, this callout is still linked to the model. If you make changes to the model, the things that are underlying in the callout will still keep on changing and updating. So if you change the floor system, if you change the beams around, all those callout things, those things that are the actual model elements, will still show up. But if I go to call out, what we can start doing here at this higher level of detail is start adding some more information to it that will really you know, start completing this. You know, give you some more detail about what really wants to happen. Now, as you're thinking about these sorts of like uh, call outs, there's really two sorts of things that we typically add. Well, there's a bunch of different things in here. We'll talk about some of this in class today. We add annotations, we tend to put dimensions, and we put uh, callouts and keynotes and things like that in there. We also tend to add into here, it's really sort of more information that we won't necessarily model in true 3D, okay, but we want to have show up in the detail okay, as part of explaining what's going on. 
Examples are, for example, like at the bottom of most of our walls, we'll have like anchor bolts or something like that that are tying them to the foundation. And there's always this hard trade off where you're going to really model it accurately in 3D and have a bunch of 3D anchor bolts. Or is it OK to have a typical section detail, OK, and just sort of put things in there really more as line work than as a 3D model, OK, but have it represented that way? And there's this funny thing, and it's we're sort of pushing this dimension to sort of say, how often do you actually model everything accurately in 3D versus actually just putting it in as line work, something like that? And our attitude about that has changed. It used to be we did much more as line work and much less 3D modeling, but we're getting better and better. And we're realizing the more you can actually put into the accurate 3D model, for example, those clips mm -hmm. between the structural part and the veneer, the better in terms of actually having a true accurate tally of what's going on and understanding just exactly where it would be located. But let me show you sort of what we do as a starting point, mm -hmm. okay, and then we'll go from there. But you will go to section box, yeah. Yes. I have a question. Yes. Is that white box brand so the, the brick? That white box? Uh, oh, this is the, the extent. No, she's asking about the whole box. No, yeah, this is the core box. This is the new part. Yes. Oh, okay. I was like, what is that? Oh, yeah. No, that's just, that's just the boundaries and where the whole light is. It's, think of it like almost like a crop region. Okay. And you can sort of go ahead and change that if, if it turns out you need to kind of have it be a little bit different. Okay. So, what we typically do to these views is we'll add a little bit to them. And under the Annotate tab, you'll find all these cool things we can add. We can add things like dimensions. So if I want to say that the dimension from here to here is whatever it is, I can add some sort of dimension in there. If I want to and go ahead and add some annotations, and this is sort of a very common thing, we'll just sort of put some text in there. I could go through and put in text, which sort of starts to explain what's going on. If I choose the text tool, I have the issue of does it have a call or a a leader on it, is it formatted uh, to the left <laughs> or to the right? Okay, this is my CMU wall core. But we tend to add things that just sort of start to explain the things that aren't sort of immediately visible. Where'd that go away? Hmm. Oh, I think it's cropped off. There it is. I should warn you, there are actually sort of two different things floating around in here. There's the what's called the actual uh, callout boundary. Uh, something else. It's like the clock boundary. There's the annotation clock boundary. And that's this outer surface. So you, your annotations are sort of falling off. Yeah, they may be outside of the boundary. Okay, hey, for annotations, go to the annotate tab. And now let's go say choose a piece of text. And now, just add, actually, let's go ahead and go back to annotating, and we'll go ahead and give one that has a leader to it. That'll give you a little more to it, say text. And, oh, where is it? Okay, and let's go ahead and put one that has a leader to it. There you go. Now you can pop, pop. There you go. Yeah. So we can start adding some, yes? How do you get the tower? Oh. That's part of uh, the text, <clears throat> the notion of whether the text has a leader. So if you say annotate and you choose the text tool, there's this notion of does it have a leader or is it just sort of plain text? And I tend to always have leaders on my text, so I can go ahead and choose that. Do you, uh, can you change the font on this? Yes, you can. So if you'd like to change the font styling, it's actually, if you choose the annotation, you sort of get a text and it says one quarter inch aerial. Okay. If you'd like to change that, like most things, you can edit the type and duplicate it and create a new type. So you can make it smaller or you can make it bold. You can just go ahead and change it to something else, like a different type style. So instead of aerial, something different. A lot of times people put more of a handwritten font in there, like Enviro or something that looks a little more scripty. What change the font? Okay, if you if you choose the uh, annotation, but you go ahead and finish typing your text. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to click out. Text. And click on the annotation. And then right over here, you can edit the type. And you can either choose another one that's already defined, or you can create a new one. Okay. So we can add things like this. Let me show you just two last things before you have to add out the class. And one is. There's this notion of really putting in there, oh, it's what I'll call 
uh, just detail components. Let me show you what those are. The idea is when we want to go through and put in some line work to represent something, but we don't actually want to model it truly in 3D, there's things called detail components. Let me show you what they're all about. I could go ahead and just draw in lines, just like I draft in any other system. I could draft in and add in some lines doing whatever I want to and just put them on the view, but they're just lines. If you go through and do a detail component, it's a little bit better than doing just lines. If I go through and load in something, there's a bunch of detail components available for a lot of standard things you need. For example, under metals, you'll find things like, oh, I always have to find it in here, common work results for metals. I'll find bolts and anchor bolts and things like that. So if I want to, for example, put an anchor bolt in there, I can grab this detail component. Again, it's only a 2D object, but it has a little bit of smarts to it. In that if I go through and put it in here, I'm going to put it in sort of a nonsensible place just so I can sort of show it to you. Okay. But here it is. It's a 2D object, but it still is parametric. So I can go through, and if I know that I want to have, oh, like a 15-inch one, as opposed to a 9-inch one, I can go through and adjust it and have it sort of have the right appearance. It's like, so what it is is under annotations, components, and then it's uh, I'm going to load a family. And then under family, I'm going to go under detail components. And I found those under metals, but you're going to find pieces of flashing, all sorts of edge details, a lot of things that you'll need, you know, like uh, parapet caps, different little pieces of flashings you'll put around your windows, things like that. But go ahead and just sort of choose, because it's under common, you'll find like bolts and anchor bolts and things like that, carriage bolts, steel plates. Okay. But the idea is all these different things are, these are still just 2D pieces. They're really there for drafting efficiency. It's not creating a true 3D object, but we'll talk about really when you want to go ahead and make things truly 3D versus 2D, because that's really one of the fundamental kind of hard parts. components like this for 3D? Um, there are some, and if not, we sort of make ours okay. to kind of do that. Mm -hmm. Now, 2D drafting and creating details like this is actually sort of the way a lot of people do things and they do it like that. But where you guys are pushing, well, let's finish with this, is the notion of 3D details. Because 3D details is really, that's where it's really, really rooted. Okay. Obviously, you would not apply for the whole building. Yes. But if you want to show, you know, to contract for all the components, assembly, and, you know, it may, it's very useful to have 3D. Exactly. So let so us... We are trying to, you, but you would not do this for thousands of ties around the building because it would not be necessary. You know? Exactly. So that's why you would go for 2D equivalent. So, so let me even here, I'm going to go and just put in some wall, some windows or something like that to make this a little more interesting. And I'll do one at level one also. Because, and this could be a curtain wall or whatever it is. It's your basic assembly. So here I am, I'm looking at the section. Two windows. Yeah, the two windows are in it. Super. Okay. So yeah, here's. perfect for us. So it's a window slab and another window. Beautiful. For, for our uh, project or something. Okay, and if I look at the call out, you'll see it's there. But this is all sort of still in 2D. Now, if you'd like to go through and make it a 3D view, let's show you how you do that. How you do that is. Yes. Oh. Just go, go to the home and you have windows. Yeah, you go to the home and you can choose the window tool. I think just place them in there or curtain walls, and then whatever you it is. The types you, you just choose what kind of window you want to have. Yeah. And you, if you need, you can load more, right? There's exactly. Just here. load them from the library or create new types. Yeah. Okay. So if you go to that call out, here's the deal. If you have a view which looks an awful lot like what you'd like to see as a 2D view and you'd like to make it a 3D view, because that's going to be much more expressive and really kind of give the contractor a very good idea of how everything goes together in one area, what you need to do is as follows. We're going to start by just creating a 3D view. And the way to do that is go to, there's this default 3D view. I haven't been playing with it very much, but it's, it looks like a little house. Okay, and there's my default 3D view. Go ahead and see if you can get yourself a default 3D view up. Okay, looks good. And it's, it's that little house guy up in here. Got it. Now, the 3D view has this funny property called a section box, and the section box is going to learn. To, you're going to learn to. It's your best friend yeah. in terms of really understanding. Exactly. 
Let's finish this. Let's finish this. You guys only have three or four minutes. Yeah. So let me get you out of here. Okay. I'll, I'll stick around and answer some questions. No worries. But okay. So basically, if you're looking at the 3D view, and then in the properties palette, you'll find something called section box. And go ahead and just click in the 3D view. So uh, just go ahead to modify and just click in the view. Right over in there somewhere. Um, we're still modifying or placing the window. Okay. Okay, now go back and let's click in the middle of the window. Or the middle. She clicked the modify tool, then in the drawing area. There you go. And now let's see if we can get to a section box. It's down there a little further. There, where it go? There it is. Okay, here's what the section box is good for. The section box lets you go ahead and create a 3D section. So that's the box. If I go through and click on the box, I'll get little blue arrows all around it. And I can sort of push and pull the boundaries of the box. Three dimensional kind of cropping tool, right? Three dimensional cropping tool. So if you choose it and push and pull it, then you can pull it here. So this is the best section Okay. Now that's going to get you started pretty far because you can go through and use the 3D section box, the section box to go ahead and really start to create these like 3D views that you need to. But let me show you something that's even sort of going to save you some more time relative to that because if you like the idea of a 3D view and section box, okay, you can go ahead and do something that makes it very, very quick to create those 3D views. And that looks like this. Okay, do this as your final thing for today. Go ahead and open up in the project browser, you have that default 3D view. So it's like 3D and it has like a... Yeah, so go ahead and choose that. I want you to go ahead and right click on that. And we're going to say duplicate that view. Yep. And when you say duplicate that view, let's go ahead... Oops, I did the wrong thing there. Let's go ahead and go through and say that you're going to give it a name. Actually, we didn't duplicate it there. I just kind of gave it a new name right in here. I'm going to rename it. I'm going to right-click and do that. I'm going to call this my 3D detail. All I'm doing is I'm creating a separate 3D view because I'm going to have a lot of 3D views. I want to be able to kind of save them, right? Okay. Now, go ahead and open up that 3D detail view. Looking good. Actually, I'll See if I'm going to get this in the right order. I might have to do it in the other order, but we'll do it. The, we'll get it figured out one way or the other. Go to the thing that says call out a section one, that little call out you made in 2D a while ago, the little 2D section. So it's probably under sections. Okay. And if you have that, do you have a call out? Let's say we may not call out. No worries. If you have that call out view, here's what you can do. Go through and with that call out view, oh, actually, go back to the 3D view. I'm sorry, I'm getting myself out of order. Go back to 3D detail one, the one you created. If you go to this little guy over here called the view cube and right click on him, you can do something called orienting it to the view. And if you orient it to the view, then choose sections, you can actually choose that call out. And what that'll do is it'll actually set the section box to match the boundaries that you have in your 2D view. But it's actually creating a 3D view of exactly what you were looking at there. And you can still go through and adjust the section box. So you see, guys, these are beautiful details in the sense that you have vertical section, you have, for example, you can have horizontal cap. You know, so there's a lot of interesting conditions in your show, right? So in here. We can adjust the section box. The jam, you can see the sill. You will see in the bottom head. You have the sill here. You have jam. You will have a head and slot. You have everything you want. If you put this on, it is perfect. Head, sill, jam, and slot. Hey, Danielle, what you got? So this is the best. This is what you're looking for. This is the best. Because then you show couple conditions, right? Right. And then in the drawings, you add time. Yes. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, if, yes. You, you know. Maybe we can later see how we can. Can we do a box that we can push slightly this stuff? Yeah. So let me even. Yeah. In fact, we'll, 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 we'll show some of you. A couple of one model with a couple of different ways of showing it. Right? Sure. We don't draw ten times, right? Yeah. 
In fact, we'll show some of that in class today, but we'll do things like, we'll look at how we put in the, uh, the, the metal decking so the yes. pan looks right. I'll show you real quickly now. There's this little thing. We can make things into... You all have to guys put a cell, these little things. You have to have here a header for the brake. Yep. Right. Like an L-shaped uh, cell. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So we can but you can see that this is, if you know what you're doing, it's half a day of food. Yeah, right. you know, so it's it's, not, mm -hmm. it's yeah. not a drug. Yeah, this is really hard. You know, so it's, yeah. it's a half a day of work. Mm -hmm. This is time that you take doing tutorials, after doing tutorials. You know, saying so there's more drama than. Uh, yeah. So hopefully this will get you started. We'll show you some more yeah. techniques. Yeah, and later we can create other views that kind of expose time. The idea is that the more complex the science you can do, which we do, guys, you have to explain more and more to the contractor how you put together. Uh -huh. If you don't explain right, your price on the project is twice as much. People don't understand things, they price them twice as much. That's mm -hmm. normal. If you want to have, which why I'm working on the Gary project, that it went through the roof because uh, if you don't explain, and I was probably not explaining the right, <laughs> exactly. you know, like, this is reality. Yep. So we'll, we'll so go into you know this piece. Okay, what we're going to do is we'll show you that you can go through and take your wall and you can do something called making it into parts. We can break it into parts. And when you break it into parts... But this is only for this view. Yes. Okay. Well, actually, no. You're making it into separate parts, but then you can sort of... And actually, it's, it's true 3D parts, although we could go ahead and have... I think we could have several instances so we can sort of okay. adjust it different ways. Because you do want to do this thing where you start saying that you have these exposed views. Mm -hmm. So we yes. can actually get into this layer versus that layer mm -hmm. and start to peel back the different layers of the assembly. I think this will be also good, Mac, to show. Yeah. Because I think it's, you know, you guess, you know what I'm saying, what, right? Mm -hmm. And adding some ties and different things, right? Yep. How do you separate the layers? Okay, what it is is we'll go through and choose a wall. For example, we can choose the floor here. And we say right up here, we're going to say create parts. Parts, create parts. And that'll go through and break and it into you, the different component and then pieces. Pull, for example, slab away from the... Uh, Copy away from the deck, right? Exactly. So once you go through and create the parts, we can then, it's actually two pieces. Although this is actually, is there two in there? I think there are. Just one. There's one. This doesn't look like a deck. This You're right. Like Do I not have the. Uh... This looks like. Yeah, it just looks like the one. Like a, like a... Oh, there it is. No, it's not. Okay, Maybe well. <laughs> what is it? It is there. It's interesting. It doesn't show it very well in terms of what we want it to. It should be two different things, but there's not much to it because you know the the, the metal deck in particular is a very strange part because it, it has the. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about that. You're going to find out. This also works for uh, perspective views. Okay. So if you want to go there and do something like that, mm -hmm. as opposed to just these uh, accident metrics. But yes, understand. Even for your brick project in three four weeks, you can really explain to your contractors right yeah. what's happening in pieces. Right? You know what I'm saying? with this approach. And it can have different sections, and this is how you actually should approach, I think, you know, the brick project. And have, but let's get some my part. Yeah. So if you were want, want to move this back, how would you do that? What you do is, okay, in the properties panel, there's something that says show the, uh, something about shape handles. Like show shape handles, or click that, and then it'll like uh, put the little blue arrows on it. <laughs> If if you've broken yeah if you've broken it then you can say that your show shape handles uh -huh. right there and now that little blue area it will have like a little little arrows <laughs> on it so oh you're kind of we're so oblique to it it's hard to sort of do the yep yeah, rotate it around a little bit it, 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 it shape handles. Yeah, there they are. But yeah, we're still pretty dead on to them. Try clicking on the right at the upper corner right there. Yeah, up, up, it's up. The upper right. Okay, actually right there. You go. Okay, and now click on the red brick. Okay, now you have those handles and you can push them back a little bit. Yeah. 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 So what is this? That's actually the layer underneath it. That's actually the yeah, insulation layer behind it. Oh, okay. So what you like doing is peeling back a layer of the wall. Oh, so that you can see each. Oh, okay. Very nice. Okay, let's go ahead and break for now. The